Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Happy New Year to you and yours as we wind down 2020. Well, we did it. Green Energy Futures YouTube channel topped 5 million views this week. In part two of our 2020 wrap-up, we turn our attention to the electrification of transportation. Norman Crowley of the Cool Planet Group of companies said it best in 2020. But if you look at the data, like if you're any way financially astute and you look at the data around electric cars and you think ICE is going to be okay past 2030, you are, you are not a good person at judging numbers, right? Because all of the graphs are just going in one direction right now. And so that's transport is done. Indeed, the auto industry pledged $300 billion to the development of 700 models of electric vehicles, mostly by 2025, just prior to last year. And if you missed our full-length 48-minute interview with Norman Crowley last year, it really is an eye-opener. Check it out on our YouTube channel. Electrification is also seriously expanding the possibilities of the lowly bicycle as a mode of transportation. As sales of e-bikes soared in 2020, we went along for a ride with Leon Milner in 2020. Um, Yeah, just look around us. I mean, this is the commute daily on an e-bike. This is a lot nicer than uh, rush hour traffic, that's for sure. Um, And then I guess on top of that, just the environmental benefits, um, the cost savings, the exercise, the fitness. Um, Yeah, it's, it's just awesome. Leon said those words while riding his e-bike, another video well worth checking out. E-bikes double the practical range for bicycle commuters, making them much more viable forms of active transportation in our sprawling cities. Edmonton introduced an update to its energy transition plan and a new city plan that calls for more human-scale development, more active transportation, and the electrification of transportation in 2020. YEG began electrifying its transit fleet last year as well. Yeah, so right now we currently have uh, 40 buses in our, uh, that we've ordered. We have 33 on site as uh, right now. And then as we uh, explore our opportunities, we're able actually to take 60 electric buses in our fleet at any one time. And our fleet size right now is just under 1,000 buses. So this actually gives us the ability to look at what the transition of the future looks like. That's transit boss Eddie Robar from Edmonton, giving us a tour of Edmonton's new e-bus barns. He says electrification is about more than reducing emissions. And really it's about keeping our costs low. We're looking at how do we take the money that we have in the pot of cash that we have for transit and and make sure that we're maximizing that uh, for the city of Edmonton. So this offers us a 30% reduction in, in, in costs for our maintaining the bus itself, just to maintain it. And then as well, on top of that, anywhere from 50 to 75% savings in our fuel. Irish millionaire Norman Crowley started Electrify in 2020, a company that builds retro versions of the classics as all-electric supercars. He started with his own 1963 Stingray. And for those car nerds listening, it will go from 267 brake horsepower, maybe, although I think some of those horses have died over the years, um, to 2,000 brake horsepower. In November, 80% of car sales were electric in Norway. We may be oblivious to this transformation in our bubbles, but rest assured the electric vehicle revolution is upon us. Happy New Year to you and yours. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.